Hello, welcome to module 3, financial reports and recording financial transactions. I think this is the most important of our series of lectures on accounting. In this, I show you how to record transactions and then how to prepare financial statements. In accounting, we prepare three types of reports. It's published in what's called an annual report. The first report, income statement. An income statement has revenue, we did that before, do you remember? It has expense, we did that before. And what we do is the following. We subtract expense from revenue to arrive at profit. Just as an aside, Profit is also called net income. We did this formula or equation before. Revenue minus expense equals profit. The second type of financial report is called Statement of Owner's Equity. It shows the following. The capital put in by the owner, it shows the profit made by the business during the year. It also shows something called drawings. And we did drawings before. What is drawings? Drawings refer to money pulled out of the business by the owner for his or her personal use. So drawings has a negative impact on equity. What about profit? Profit has a positive impact on equity. Likewise, if the company makes a loss, that would have a negative impact on equity. So I'm going to show you another accounting equation, which is owner's equity, or equity, as we called it before, is capital plus profit less drawings. So let me repeat. Equity is capital plus profit Let's draw it. Once we do the statement of owner's equity, the third type of report is called, I'm sure you know it, balance sheet. The balance sheet shows assets, it shows liabilities, and it also shows something else. Owner's equity or equity. So those are the three components which go into the balance sheet. And the famous accounting formula, which you are now really comfortable with, I'm sure is, net worth of a company is assets less liabilities. If you have understood this, let's look more closely at the balance sheet. Just remember one more thing. Net worth always equals owner's equity. Don't forget that. Here we go now. Balance sheet. As we said before, the balance sheet has three categories. It's got assets. It's got 
liabilities. And the third was equity. Equity or owner's equity, two words, means the same thing. Previously, we called it equity. In this module, we call it owner's equity, but it's the same thing. So that's the third component in a balance sheet, owner's equity. The assets are broken down into two categories, current assets. Current assets are short-term assets. That's assets which last less than one year. Can you give me examples? Think about it. Have you thought about it? Let me give you some examples. Cash is a short-term asset. Accounts receivable is a short-term asset. Do you buy that? You don't give your customers more than one year to pay you. Inventory is a short-term asset. Do you keep inventory for more than one year? No. As I said, there are two types of assets, short-term and long-term. Short-term assets are called current assets. Long-term assets come under the following category. Property, plant, and equipment. Property, plant, and equipment are long-term assets. Can you give me examples? We did this in Module 1. Think about it. Let me show you a few. Land and buildings are examples of assets that last more than one year or long term. Remember the criteria to differentiate between long term and short term is one year. If you hold it less than one year, it's short term or current assets. If you hold it more than one year, it's long term and comes under property, plant, and equipment. Let's look at liabilities. The liabilities are broken down into two categories, short-term or current liabilities. Can you give me examples of current liabilities? Take your time and think about it for a minute. We have done some of these before. Let me give you an example. Accounts payable, that's money you owe suppliers, is a current liability. Notes payable, note payable by defini definition is a short-term loan. Notes payable is a short-term loan that's repayable within a year. There are more examples, but I've just given you two. So you have current liabilities, which are liabilities less than one year, and you have long-term liabilities. Can you give me an example of long-term liabilities? This is money you owe, but you've got more than one year to pay it. Think for a minute. Mortgage. That's a perfect example of a long-term liability. In general, any loan that's repayable over a period exceeding a year will come under long-term liabilities. So this is what a balance sheet looks like. You're supposed to total the assets column. Then you total the liabilities, which is the current and long term, and the owner's equity, that's the column on the right. And guess what? How do you know if you're correct? They should balance. If a balance sheet doesn't balance, means you've got problems. A balance sheet should balance. Let's look at the following exercise. What I 
I'd like you to do is I'd like you to print this out and have it in front of you. On April 1, Polly Darton established the Double Surprise Travel Agency in Hickory, Arkansas. The following transactions were completed during the month. And you can see it in front of you. Here's more transactions. So altogether, you have 12 transactions. I want you to print out these two slides. And we're going to do the problem together as a team. This is what I require. For Here we go. First, record the transaction in a particular format, which I'm going to show you in a minute. After recording all the transactions, prepare an income statement, statement of owner's equity, and balance sheet for the double surprise travel agency. Once you have done that, tell me what you think is the net worth of the Double Surprise Travel Agency. I don't know whether you heard this word before. It's new. I'll explain it as we go along. What's the liquidity position of the Double Surprise Travel Agency? Liquidity means your ability to generate enough cash to pay off your bills. What would be the problem if you're not liquid Guess what? You go bankrupt. Then, tell me the solvency position of the travel agency. Solvency means ability to survive in the long term. I'd like you to print the, this question out, please. So, in front of you, you should have the all the transactions, which is the problem, and the questions. Then we're going to do this as a team. What I want you to do is first have a column for assets, have a column for liabilities, and have a column for owner's equity. Under assets, show the different type of assets. Under liabilities, show the different type of liabilities. So you got under assets, cash, equipment, supplies, accounts receivable, vehicle. Under liabilities, you got accounts payable and bank loan. Print out the screen in front of you. then let's do the transactions. I'm going to help you. I'll do the first transaction for you. Then I'd like you to stop this recording, enter all the transactions, total it up, and then restart. So let me do the first one for you. Polly Darden invested 10,000 cash to start the agency. What happens? Cash goes up. So, under cash, you put plus 10,000. What else happens? The cash Polly Darton, as the owner, puts in the business is capital. Capital is part of owner's equity. So, owner's equity is plus 10,000. There you go. I set you up. Now, what I want you to do is do all the transactions. Take your time. Don't cheat. Don't look at this. Do all the transactions. When you're done, restart this presentation. So stop now. Take your time. And start entering the transactions. Start again when you're done.
you're done? Okay, let's do it one by one. Let's check if you got it correct. The first one I already told you. Cash goes up 10,000 and capital goes up by 10,000. Capital is owner's equity. So equity goes up 10,000. What did you do for transaction two? They paid 4,000 cash for rent. So cash goes down and an expense goes up. Here it is. Cash goes down. An expense has a negative impact on owner's equity. So under cash, you put minus 4,000. Under owner's equity, you put minus 4,000. Try transaction three. You purchased office equipment for 2,500 cash. Cash goes down 2,500. And equipment goes up 2,500. There you go. One asset goes down, another asset goes up. Did you get that? Try transaction four. Incurred 13,000 for advertising in the Hickory Tribune on account. So you got advertising expense, 13,000 on account. So that's accounts payable. You owe money to a pro the supplier. So here's the double impact. Advertising expense, is that good for owner's equity or bad for owner's equity? I just told you expenses are bad for equity. So under equity, it's minus 13,000. You created a liability because you owe 13,000 to an accounts payable. The liability increased. So under accounts payable, it's plus 13. What about the next one? Paid 6,000 for office supplies. Should be easy. Here it comes. Cash goes down and supplies, which is an asset, goes up. That was easy, wasn't it? The sixth is the most difficult. Take your time. You provided 59,500 worth of service. So revenue goes up 59,500. You collected cash 40,000. So cash is plus 40. The other 19,500 the customer owes you, so accounts receivable should be, guess what, plus 19.5. Here it comes. Revenue, is it good for equity or bad for equity? It's good. So under owner's equity, it's plus 59.5. Cash, asset, plus 40. Accounts receivable, another asset, plus 19.5. Cause the customer owes you 19,500. What did you do for transaction seven? The owner withdrew 30,000 for personal use. So cash goes down and guess what? Owner's equity goes down. When an owner pulls money out of the business, is that good for equity or bad for equity? It's bad because the business is losing money. So owner's equity is minus 30,000. The company paid money, so cash minus 30. Did you get that? Try number eight. You paid the Arkansas Tribune 10000 being part payment of the amount owed. You owed them 13000 You paid them 
10,000. So, here comes cash goes down 10 and accounts payable or liability goes down 10. Because if you paid them, you don't owe them 13, you owe them 13 less 10. What about the next one? You paid employee salaries of 5,000. Cash goes down and you have salaries expense. Is an expense good for equity or bad for equity? We agreed it's bad. Here it comes. Cash goes down 5. Owner's equity goes down 5,000. What's the next one? Receive 10,000 cash from customers you previously billed in transaction 6. Look at the accounts receivable. They owe you 19,005. How much did they pay you? 10,000. So the double impact is cash goes up 10 because you received money. Accounts receivable is minus 10 because since they paid you, they owe you 10,000 less. The good news is we're almost home. What did you do for transaction 11? This is a loan. Cash goes up 50,000. And don't you have a liability? Bank loan? Liability goes up 50, so it should look like this. Cash up 50. Liability increase 50. The last one. Motor vehicle. You purchased a motor vehicle for 30,000 on account. What's a double whammy? Take your time. You should be really familiar with this now. Here it comes. Vehicle goes up. Vehicle is an asset. It's plus 30. And accounts payable, a liability, goes up because you owe them money. How do you know you got everything correct? You have to add up each column. It should look like this. Check for yourself. If you add up, do you remember the famous accounting equation? Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. If you add up all the asset columns, what does it come to? It should come to 100,500. If you add up the liabilities and owner's equity column, what does it come to? The same. This means you got everything down perfectly. The beauty of the accounting equation is if you made one mistake, just one, it won't balance. Now, let's do an income statement since you recorded all the transactions. What did I tell you? An income statement has revenue and expense. From your spreadsheet, what was the revenue? 59.5. Then you put in the expenses. Just look it up and write it down. Am I correct? Just remember to check off each item as you take it. Expenses are 22, so your profit is 37.5. Let's do uh, the statement of owner's equity. Do you remember the formula? Owner's equity statement as capital, 
I think that was 10. Can you check? Is that what you have on your spreadsheet? The capital belongs to the owners. The profit the business makes belongs to the owners. So add profit. 37.5. You got this of the income statement. So in total, owner's equity is 47.5 less money they pulled out for personal use, which is drawings of 30,000, gives you equity of 17,005. Now, let's do the balance sheet. The balance sheet has assets, it has liabilities, and the assets are broken down into two categories, long term, short term. Pick out the short-term assets from your spreadsheet. It should be cash, accounts receivable, supplies. Are there any more? If not, the long-term assets, you stick it under property, plant, and equipment, and they are Equipment, 2,500. Vehicle, 30,000. Is that it? If so, total it up. Comes to 100,500. Go on to your liabilities side. Start with the current liabilities. What are they? Accounts payable, 33,000. That's it. Did you search? There's no other current liabilities. If not, go to your long-term liabilities. What do you have? You have loan of 50. What's missing? A balance sheet has assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. We figured out owner's equity as 17.5. Total, the right-hand side, which is the liabilities plus owner's equity, what do you get? The same. This means that you've got everything down perfectly. Let's do part C. What is the net worth of the double surprise travel agency? What's the formula? Do you remember the equation? It's assets less liabilities. Try that for a minute. Stop this recording and get back to it. Are you done? Here we go. Net worth is assets less liabilities. What was the assets column? 100,005. The liabilities, that's the money the business owes outsiders is 83. So the net worth is 17,5. Does that number look familiar? Of course, it's equity. Part D. I wanted to ask you about liquidity. What is liquidity? Can the business generate enough cash to pay off bills? This is very important. How would a loan officer measure liquidity? They have a formula, a ratio, which looks like this. They divide current assets by current liabilities. What do you get when you do this for the double surprise travel agency? 
Can you do it and tell me? If you want, stop this recording till you're done. What you get? 2.06. Is that good or bad? The cutoff for a loan officer is 2. If you get a ratio of less than 2, they conclude that the business can't generate enough cash to pay off bills. That means they'll have liquidity problems. Over 2 is good. This person, the double surprise travel agency, is marginal. Remember, 2 is the cutoff, and they're just at the cutoff point. So the conclusion is they can just generate enough cash to pay off bills. Part E, what about solvency? Solvency means can the business survive in the long term? A loan officer measures solvency by this ratio. Total debt which is the money the business owes outsiders, divided by total assets. Stop this recording and try it. What do you get? Eighty-three thousand divided by hundred thousand five, eighty-two point five. Is that good or bad? The answer is it's horrible. 82.5% means creditors have a claim on 82% of your business. Is that good? That's terrible. The cutoff for solvency is 40, 40%. 40 Just remember that. Ideally, for your business, you want to be the majority owner. For the this company, 82% means, as I said before, I repeat, outsiders have a claim on 82% of the business. A very high debt-to-asset ratio means the business is very risky. Last question. Would you put your money on the double surprise travel agency? Maybe not. The net worth is low. They can barely generate enough cash to pay off bills. And their debt to asset ratio is very high. So the answer would be it's not worth investing in. So in this module, I showed you how to record transactions, how to prepare an income statement, how to prepare a statement of owner's equity, how to do a balance sheet, how to figure out net worth of a business, how to calculate liquidity, and how to assess the risk of a business. I hope you enjoyed it. We're done with this module.